yo, this is something crazy. I got to tell y'all, man. I'm not even going to tell y'all. Y'all got to check this out right now. Ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves for an unprecedented legal shockwave. In an extraordinary turn of events, Judge Aileen Cannon has been arrested by the FBI in a dramatic raid that has left the legal community and the nation reeling. Grab your popcorn, because this story is packed with intrigue, high stakes, and a potential political bombshell. Before we dive into the juicy details, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for all the latest updates. Now, let's get into the heart of the matter. Around 1 p.m. Eastern Time, a convoy of six unmarked FBI vehicles descended upon Judge Cannon's residence. Neighbors were stunned as a dozen agents stormed the front door with weapons drawn. Within minutes, Judge Cannon was led out in handcuffs, passionately proclaiming that this was an outrageous abuse of power and a violation of her civil rights. The charges? Obstruction of justice and conspiracy. And if you think this sounds like the plot of a blockbuster thriller, hold on to your hats. The specifics are even more sensational. Sources close to the investigation suggest that Cannon's arrest stems from her controversial role as the presiding judge in the special master case between former President Donald Trump and the Department of Justice. Prosecutors have allegedly gathered substantial evidence that Cannon engaged in improper communications with Trump allies and made rulings that were politically motivated rather than impartial. The legal world in South Florida is in shock. Colleagues of Cannon, who has been known for her contentious rulings, expressed disbelief. One former federal prosecutor commented, While no judge is above the law, this scenario involving the arrest of a sitting jurist is almost unheard of. It underscores the seriousness of the DOJ's investigation into the mishandling of classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. Let's rewind a bit. Cannon's bias in favor of Trump has been a topic of heated debate. Her initial ruling granted Trump's request for a special master to review records, despite objections from the DOJ, which argued it would hamper a critical national security investigation. She also barred the government from using classified materials during the review process, decisions that defied legal precedent and sparked appeals from the DOJ. Adding to the controversy, Cannon appointed Raymond Deary, a respected senior judge, as special master, but also included Trump ally Chris Kaisey in the process. Trump donated over $7 million to the family of firefighter Corey Comparatore, who was killed protecting his family at the shootout. Trump made his first speech as the official Republican president candidate and paid tribute to the late Corey. Are you voting for Trump? Breaking news. Secret Service denied Trump extra security for two years. In a shocking revelation, it's been reported that the Secret Service repeatedly denied Donald Trump's requests for additional security in the two years leading up to last weekend's assassination attempt. Sources say the former president asked for more agents, magnetometers, and snipers at his events, but senior officials claimed they didn't have the resources. This came to light after the recent shooting at Trump's rally in Pennsylvania. The assassination attempt left Trump with a graze to his ear and tragically killed one supporter, with two others seriously injured. The attack has sparked outrage and criticism of the Secret Service's handling of Trump's security. Following the incident, the agency has increased Trump's security detail to match President Biden's. Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle has faced mounting pressure to resign amidst the backlash. Trump's campaign has consistently asked for more protection, but the requests were often denied. Now, the agency admits they relied on local law enforcement instead of providing the specialized units Trump needed. What do you think about this revelation? Should the Secret Service have done more? Drop your comments below and follow for more breaking news. Kamala Harris announcing she's dropping out. Once drawing huge crowds, one of the top candidates on the Democratic side. So what happened? What she said today in her very candid message to her supporters. A campaign that started with so much promise brought to an abrupt end today, even before the first vote was cast. I'm not a billionaire. I can't fund my own campaign. Senator Kamala Harris, who sought to be the first black female president of the United States, calling the decision one of the hardest of her life. I cannot tell you that I have a path forward if I don't believe I do. 
She shot to the top tier early, famously taking on Biden for his previous position on mandated busing to integrate schools. There was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools, and she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. But Harris started to plateau in the polls, often struggling to defend her record as a prosecutor. When you had the power, why didn't you try to affect change then? I'm glad you asked me this question. I made a decision that if I was going to have the ability to reform the system, I would try to do it from the inside. Was I able to get enough done? Absolutely not. Over the weekend, signs the campaign was unraveling. The New York Times obtaining a resignation letter from a Harris aide who said, I no longer have confidence in our campaign or its leadership. When he talks about a convicted felon, his son is a convicted felon at a very high level. His son is convicted, going to be convicted probably numerous other times. Should have been convicted before, but his Justice Department let the statute of limitations lapse on the most important things. But he could be a convicted felon as soon as he gets out of office. Joe could be a convicted felon with all of the things that he's done. The idea that I did anything wrong relative to what you're talking about is outrageous. It's simply a lie, number one. Number two, the idea that you have a right to seek retribution against any American just because you're president is wrong. It's simply wrong. No president's ever spoken like that before. No president in our history has spoken like that before. Number three, the crimes that you are still charged with, and think of all the civil penalties you have. How many billions of dollars do you owe in civil penalties for, for molesting a woman in public, for doing a whole range of things, of having sex with a porn star on the night while your wife was pregnant? I mean, what, what, what are you talking about? You, you have the morals of an alley cat. I didn't have sex with a porn star, number one. Number two, that was a case that was started and moved. They moved a high-ranking official, a DOJ, into the Manhattan DA's office to start that case. That case is going to be appealed and won. We had a very uh, terrible judge, a horrible judge, Democrat. The prosecutor were all high-ranking Democrats, appointed people, and the, both the civil and the criminal. He basically went after his political opponent because he thought it was going to damage me. But when the public found out about these cases, because they understand it better than he does, he has no idea what these cases are. But when, he, the, when they found out about these cases, you know what they did? My poll numbers went up way up. You know that because you're reporting it. We'd be able to help make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare. Are Putin's terms acceptable to you, keeping the territory no, in acceptable. Ukraine? No, they're not acceptable. But look, this is a war that never should have started. If we had a leader in this war, he led everybody along. He's given $200 billion now or more to Ukraine. He's given $200 billion. That's a lot of money. I don't think there's ever been anything like it. Every time that Zelensky comes to this country, he walks away with $60 billion. He's the greatest salesman ever. And I'm not knocking him. I'm not knocking anything. I'm only saying he, the money that we're spending on this war and we shouldn't be spending. It should have never happened. I will have that war settled between Putin and Zelensky as president-elect before I take office on January 20th. I'll have that war settled. People being killed so needlessly, so stupidly, and I will get it settled, and I'll get it settled fast before I take office. You President know, Biden, you have a minute. The fact is that Putin is a war criminal. He's killed thousands and thousands of people. And he has made one thing clear. He wants to reestablish what was part of the Soviet empire, not just a piece. He wants all of Ukraine. That's what he wants. And then you think he'll stop there? Do you think he'll stop when he, if he, if he takes Ukraine? What do you think happens to Poland? What do you think of Be Belarus? What do you think happens to those NATO countries? And so if you want a war, you ought to find out what he's going to do. Because if, in fact, he does what he says and walks away, and by the way, all that money we give Ukraine are from weapons we make here in the United States. We give them the weapons, not the money at this point. And, and our NATO allies have produced as much 
funding for Ukraine as we have. That's why, it's, that's why we're strong. No way did Kamala just said that. Listen to this. What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. What? Look at her face. This is why we put them in dormitories. No, 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 but look at her face. Look at her face. Look at that face. And look at his face. That tells you all you need to know. They are not amused. Kamala Harris just called young voters stupid. And then we'll get this clip which shows what goes on in her head. Listen. This is going to be a humbling thing I'm about to share with you. If someone is 18 years old today, they were born in 2005. Oh. Oh, what? That Think about that for a minute. <laughs> is that supposed to impress somebody? If somebody's 18, that means they were born in 2005. If somebody is one years old, that means they were born 12 months ago. What the heck is wrong with this woman? How can anybody take this woman seriously when she's out there talking about things like that? So she's out there calling young people stupid. Then she gets up on stage and starts talking stupid things. This is one of the reasons why people say she's not fit to be president. But what say you? Do you think she's fit to be president? The story I'm about to share with you comes from Donald Trump's nephew. It comes from Donald Trump's own family member who was trying to utilize his connections with Donald Trump when Trump was disgracing the White House to help people with disabilities. And what did Donald Trump tell him? Donald Trump said to his nephew that disabled Americans, like his nephew's son, quote, should just die. They should just die, Donald Trump told his nephew. And this comes from Donald Trump's nephew in a new article published by Time. Look, as I've always said, character is everything when it comes to, I just think, all aspects of life, especially when we're dealing with people in positions of leadership. It should matter always. Let me be clear about that. And then especially when we're talking about the highest office in the United States of America, the most powerful position in the world, someone who has nuclear codes, moral character needs to matter. And that shouldn't be a Democrat or Republican thing. When I hear stories like this, it is so disheartening. Let me just share with you what Donald Trump's nephew just revealed to time in an exclusive. When my uncle was elected president, Donald Trump, I recognized what a highly privileged position I would be in. I would have some access to the White House. And as long as that was true, I wanted to make sure I used that access for something positive. I was eager to champion something my wife Lisa and I were deeply passionate about, something we lived every day. The challenges for individuals with intellectual and development disabilities and their families. Our son, William, our third child, was born on June 30th, 1999. Within 24 hours, he went from seemingly healthy to fighting for his life in the NICU. Raising him was different from the start. William was diagnosed at three months with infantile spasms, a rare seizure disorder, which in William's case altered his development physically and cognitively. We had so many questions. What would the future hold for someone like William? How far could he go? How much could he learn? Would he ever have the chance to do things that other children would do? We just didn't know. It took 15 years before his medical team could accurately pinpoint the cause of his condition, a KCNQ2 mutation, a genetic misfire that the doctors called a potassium channel deletion. And so the article then goes into the courage this family had and the work they did to help their son. And then when Donald Trump was in the White House, they were trying to bring other families that have persons with disabilities, you know, into the White House in order to help them and to um, help shape American policy as it relates to Americans with disabilities. But he some breaking news now into the Cronford newsroom. We have just learned that President Joe Biden has tested positive for COVID-19. This positive test result just came down. We're told that the president tested ahead of a speech he was set to give to a uh, Latin uh, advocacy group conference today. It's one of the we begin tonight with some cold hard facts. Donald John Trump is broke and begging for money. He owes New York State roughly $454 million and the deadline to put up a bond if he wants to. <laughs>